So in class, you've been exploring adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials graphically. And I'm going to do an example of adding, subtracting, and multiplying um, two polynomials, in this case, two linear functions. Um, so when we're adding the functions, what we're in a lot of ways adding are we're adding the y's. So I'm going to look at several x values. And I'm going to add the corresponding y's. So here, at this x value of 2, so when x equals 2, I have a y of 5 and a y of 0. So when we have x equals 2, my new y would equal 5 plus 0, which is 5. So my new y is going to have a dot right there. When I look at x equals 1, my new y has a value of 2 plus 2. They're both at 2 right here. And so that equals 4. So my new y will be 4. Um, if I look here when x is 0, my new y equals negative 1 and y equals 4. So I have a 4 plus negative 1, which is positive 3. I'm beginning to see that shape of that new combined f of x plus g of x function right here. Um, so I'll do one more. When I have x equals negative 1, I have a y of negative 4 and a y of 6. So when x equals negative 1, my new y is going to equal 6 plus negative 4, which is positive 2. And now I'm really seeing where that new line sits. So I can connect my dots here. And I am going to highlight it so that it's very clear where that new function sits. And that new function is f of x plus g of x. I should have specified on that that we're it's f of x plus g of x. So when we're adding, we're adding the y values for each into for each x value. When we're subtracting, we're going to subtract the y values for each x value. So just to specify, I am doing f of x minus g of x, because order here will matter. Um, so I'm going to use the exact same process. Um, I'm going to start here where x is 3. So when x is 3, I have a y of negative 2 and a y of 6, 7, 8. So I want to do my f of x first, so my new y is going to equal f of x minus my g of x y, so negative 2, which means I actually have a y of 10. Let's look for when x is 2. When x equals 2, I have a y value of 0 and a y value of 5. So my new y is going to be my f of x y minus my g of x, y, so that's 5. When I look at x equals 1, my new y, well in this case my y's are 2 for both of them, so it's going to be 2 minus 2, so that's a 0. When I look at x equals 0, my new y is going to be, well, I have one y here at negative 1 and one here at positive 5, but let's be very careful here because at this point my, my higher function changes. My f of x becomes the lower one, so I have to start at negative 1 minus 5, which gives me negative 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now I have four dots, and they are making a line, so I'm going to connect them. Um, you could just do two um, because two points make a line. Um, however, I will um, be, be caution you that the more points you use, 
the more likely you are to get the right answer because you can your additional points will verify that the work you're doing is is correct so this function is f of x minus g of x and as you do these more you'll get faster at these there won't need to be as much work shown you'll be able to make some connections um, um, between the functions the last one we're going to do is multiplying the functions. Now, um, you'll notice that I made my graph here really big, and I did this because when I multiply f of x times g of x, I should expect to get a quadratic shape. I have a linear, in this case I have a linear times a linear, which should give me quadratic. And I really want enough room to see that picture, that picture fully. So I'm going to actually do this with a whole number of points this time. Um, so let's start out here where x is negative 3. My new y is going to be 10 times negative 10, which is negative 100. I'm not going to be able to graph that, unfortunately. So, but at least it gives me a sense that my graph, that value is way down here somewhere. So now I'll go over to my next x's. So when x is negative 2, I have a y of negative 7 and a y of 8. Yes, 8. So I'm going to get a negative 56. So again, not on my graph, but I'm seeing again that I'm, I'm pretty low down, although I'm coming up. So I'm kind of beginning to get this shape at a low point, and then the point's still low, but um, a little higher than the negative 100. So let's go to negative 1. Hopefully this will be a point where we can actually graph it, that I've made it big enough. So here I have um, a y of 6 and a y of negative 4. That gives me a y of negative 24, and I do have space for that. So um, when x is negative 1, my y is going to be, oh, I counted by 1's, it's almost big enough. We'll just put it, we'll just add it here at the bottom. So there's my new point um, down here at the bottom. Um, if this is uh, negative 21, 22, 23, we'll estimate that to be the negative 24. So let's try with the 0, x equals 0. My y's here are negative 1 and 4, Oops. which means my new y is going to be negative 4. Plot that. When x is 1, my y is 2 and 2. It's the same, so that's 4. Make that 4. When my x is 0, my y is 0 and 5, which is 0, right there. Um, let's, do, let's do one more here. So when x is 3, I have a y of negative 2 and of positive 8, so that's going to get me a y of negative 16, right about there. Now, we know it's quadratic. We also know where both the x-intercepts are. We know them because if I multiply any number by 0, I get 0. So here, 0 times whatever this is, 5, is 0. Similarly, right here is 0 times whatever number is up here is 0. And so I am getting a general shape here. Now, what's hard about this is that I can't be fully sure that this top point here um, is my vertex. Um, so when we're doing the quadratic, we're kind of, you know, getting an, an estimate of a graph. Since we are not plugging in, we have to be plugging in more points. We have to be picking more points um, more x values, x one half, x three halves, etc. Um, one fourth, negative one half, negative one fourth. Um, but this gives us the general shape of what we get when we multiply f of x times g of x.